we're back with Dr. Whitney Oakley, Guilford County Schools Superintendent, answering your text questions. All right, so let's talk about this. They're talking about summer breakfast and lunch this year. So let's talk about the meals. Sure, so we are offering summer meals and families can even type in their zip code on our website and figure out where the closest location is for them. And that will continue throughout the summer. All right, and folks, we have that pinned to the top of our website as well. We wanna make sure that everybody has easy access to finding meals for their students this summer. Uh, this next one is Guilford County Schools has an extensive reading and math tutoring program for the last two years. Is this program going to continue in the next school year? Yeah, it's a really great question and it will continue next school year. After that, we'll have to think about sustainable funding. So our federal relief funding is what allowed us to do the tutoring sessions. We've seen great success and gotten national recognition. It's just a well done program. We did more than 300,000 tutoring sessions just this past year. And if you think about how students experienced learning loss, it's just different for every single student. And so tutoring allows us to kind of pinpoint where that loss is and address it. We've seen success. We're gonna do everything we can to advocate to continue that work. Okay, this next question is, what are you doing about students that are smoking in the bathrooms? This is like an age old problem. It is an age old problem. I think it looks different in different forms now. Um, the best thing that we can do is continue to do monitoring, but also to do education about long-term health impacts. And so making sure we have adults um, in transitions when we're between class periods, there are some things that you can't do. You can't have like cameras and bathroom stalls for obvious reasons, um, but we can continue to, to advocate, to educate, and to make sure that we're making sure that class transitions are safe and that students know that if they see something that's not right, to say something. Mm -hmm. Uh, this next question deals with lottery money. What is done with the lottery education money and does North Carolina receive education money from casinos as other states do? Sure, so there's not a casino in North Carolina. There's one closer than there has been, but not in North Carolina, so no to that piece. In terms of what the county decides to do with lottery money, sometimes we'll get pieces for some capital improvements, of a couple million dollars to address capital improvements, but for the large part, it's used to pay off loan debt service um, at, at the county level, and so that's how that funding is used. It doesn't come straight to the school system to paint walls or to hire people. Right, and how much of the budget is it? I mean, it's like a small less percent. than two, per, uh, two or three. It's a very, very small fraction. I mean, when you think of all that education, when you think of all that North Carolina lottery money, it is divided between the hundred counties and not evenly. So sometimes mm -hmm. rural counties or, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's different rules that determine how much each county gets. And that varies from year to year, but it really doesn't have a very large impact um, on our actual operating budget. And I think people will find this interesting. You don't get to choose what the money is used for. No, the, that, that's not, the, yeah, we, at the school district level, we mm -hmm. don't choose that. But we did get some lottery funds from the county this past year to address some capital improvements, and we're hopeful that that's a trend that will continue. Mm -hmm. uh, this person's asking, are there plans to include Special Olympics this year? So I think that would have to be a Special Olympics uh, question to the organization. We have students across our county who participate and love participating in Special Olympics, but it's not a district-hosted, district-funded event. Mm -hmm. Uh, when will Sternberger Elementary School be rebuilt? So Sternberger and Alan Jay are next on the design list. And so again, once you do you know the design piece, the schematic design piece, then the construction begins. It's a two and a half year process. So once we are at a, at a moving point at these schools that, that were, are in construction right now, those are the next two that will go in to design this fall. And then that process will continue for them. Okay, um, we've got about a minute left or so. Let's, can we get a quick update just on school safety? How did the body scanners work this year? Yeah, that's a great question. Safety is a top priority for me. I know it is for our whole community. I hear it every time I talk and listen to people and sending my own two kids to school every day. I know um, what that means to people. I can tell you that we've deployed 12 new safety strategies this past school year. We're gonna continue that next school year. We have seen success with the scanners working both as a preventative and an identifying method. Method. Um, in our high schools, we're going to expand those to our middle schools. They'll be in place for the first day of school in our middle schools for this upcoming school year. So I think, um, you know, it brings promise. We also have to address mental health. There's kids that have more access to guns. It's surpassed automobile accidents and the leading cause.
cause of death for adolescents. And so investing in mental health, also keeping schools safe, are things that we're going to continue to do and expand as we move into the next academic year. All right, and this is not the last of our conversations, I am sure. But if you missed anything in this particular conversation, we want you to head to WFMYNews2.com. You can watch the full interview and all of the questions. We'll be right back.